I was a rat or the scarlet slippers by Philip Pullman. At the end of this chapter, there will be seven questions for you to answer. Make sure you read the question carefully and use the text to help you. Love at the ball. Yes, it's official. Hunky Prince Richard has found a bride at last. At midnight last night, the palace announced the engagement of His Royal Highness Prince Richard to the Lady Aurelia Ashington. We are very happy, said the prince. It's understood that the royal wedding will be celebrated very soon. Our romance correspondent writes, It was like something out of a fairy tale. The charming prince, the mysterious girl who seemed to vanish into nowhere, only to be found by the merest chance. They met at the midsummer ball to the music of shimmering waltz they danced like thistledown and they only had eyes for each other i've never seen him so in love said a close friend of the prince i think this time it's the real thing it was certainly fast but by midnight they were head over heels in love and it only took another day for the engagement to be made official prince richard the lover a fact file of the playboy prince's previous girlfriends from pages two to eight Lady Aurelia, where does she come from? Our reporters investigate the background of the lovely young princess-to-be. Page 9. With stars in their eyes. I was a rat. Old Bob and his wife Joan lived by the market in the house where his father and grandfather and great-grandfather had lived before him. Cobblers all over them and cobbling was Bob's trade too. Joan was a washerwoman like her mother and her grandmother and her great-grandmother back as far as anyone could remember. And if they'd had a son, he would have become a cobbler in his turn. And if they'd had a daughter, she would have learned the laundry trade. And so the world would have gone on. But they never had a child, whether boy or girl. And now they were getting old, it seemed less and less likely that they ever would, much as they would have liked to. One evening, as old Joan wrote a letter to her niece and old Bob sat trimming the heels of a pair of tiny scarlet slippers he was making for the love of it, there came a knock at the door. Bob looked up with a jump. Was that someone knocking, he said. What's the time? The cuckoo clock answered for him before Joan could te ten o'clock. As soon as it had finished cuckooing, there came another knock, louder than before. Bob lit a candle and went through the dark shop to unlock the front door. Standing in the moonlight was a little boy in a pages uniform. It had once been smart, but it was sorely torn and stained, and the boy's face was scratched and grubby. Bless my soul, said Bob. Who are you? I was a rat, said the little boy. What did you say, said Joan, crowding in behind her husband. I was a rat, said the little boy again. You were a... Go on with you. Where do you live, she said. What's your name? But the little boy could only say, I was a rat. The old couple took him into the kitchen because the night was cold and sat him down by the fire. He looked at the flames as if he'd never seen anything like them before. What should he do, whispered Bob. Feed the poor little soul, Joan whispered back. Bread and milk, that's what my mother used to make for us. So she put some milk in a pan to heat by the fire and broke some bread into a bowl and old Bob tried to find out more about the boy. What's your name, he said. Haven't got a name. Why? Everyone's got a name. I'm Bob and this is Joan and that's who we are, see? You sure you haven't got a name? I lost it. I forgot it. I was a rat, said the boy, as if that explained everything. Oh, said Bob. You got a nice uniform, and anyway, I expect you're in service, are you? The boy looked at his tattered uniform, puzzled. Dunno, he said, finally. Dunno what that means. I expect I am, probably. In service, said Bob. That means being someone's servant. Have a master or a mistress and run errands for them. Page boys like you, they usually go along with the master or mistress in a coach, for instance. Ah, said the boy. Yes, I done that. I was a good page boy. I done everything right. Of course he did, said Bob, shifting his chair along as Joan came to the table with a bowl of warm bread and milk. She put it in front of the boy and without a second's pause, he put his face right down into the bowl and began to guzzle it up directly, his dirty little hands gripping the edge of the table. What are you doing, said Joan. Dear, oh dear, you don't eat like that. Use the spoon. The boy looked up, milk in his eyebrows, bread up his nose, his chin dripping. He doesn't know anything. Poor little thing, she said said Joan. Come to the sink, my love, and we'll wash you. Grubby hands and all. Look at you. The boy tried to look at himself, but he was reluctant to leave the bowl. That's nice, he said. I like that. It'll still be here when you come back, said Bob. I've had my supper already. I'll look after it for you. 
The boy looked wonderstruck at this idea. He watched over his shoulder as Joan led him to the kitchen sink and tipped in some water from the kettle. And while she was washing him, he kept twisting his wet face round to look from Bob to the bowl and back again. That's better, said Joan, rubbing him dry. Now you be a good boy and eat with the spoon. Yes, I will, he said, nodding. I'm surprised they didn't teach you manners when you was a page boy, she said. I was a rat, he said. Oh, well, rats don't have manners. Boys do, she told him. You say thank you when someone gives you something. That's good manners. Thank you, he said, nodding hard. That's a good boy. Now come sit down. So he sat down and Bob showed him how to use a spoon. He found it hard at first because he would keep turning it upside down before he reached his mouth and a lot of the bread and milk ended up on his lap. But Bob and Joan could see he was trying and he was a quick learner. By the time he'd finished, he was quite good at it. Thank you, he said. That's it. Well done, said Bob. Now you come along with me and I'll show you how to wash the bowl and the spoon. While they were doing that, Bob said, Do you know how old you are? Yes, said the boy. I know that all right. I'm three weeks old, I am. Three weeks? Yes, and I've got two brothers and two sisters the same age, three weeks. Five of you? Yes, I ain't seen them for a long time. What's a long time? The boy thought and said, Days. And where's your mother and father? Under the ground. Bob and Joan looked at each other and they could each see what the other was feeling. The poor little boy was an orphan and grief had turned his mind and he'd wandered away from the orphanage he must have been living in. As it happened, on the table beside him was Bob's newspaper and suddenly the little boy seemed to see it for the first time. Here, he said delighted, that's Mary Jane. He was pointing to a picture of the prince's new fiance. The prince had met her just the other day and they'd fallen in love at once and the royal engagement was the main story of the week. She's going to marry the prince, said Bob, but she ain't called Mary Jane. That ain't the kind of name they give princesses. I expect you must have got confused, said Joan, and you can't go anywhere else tonight, that's for sure. We'll make you up a bed, my love, and you can sleep here and we'll find the proper place for you in the morning. Ah, he said, I didn't know that proper place, else I'd have gone there tonight. Look, we'll have to call you something, said Bob. Something, the boy said, as if he was memorising it. A proper name, said Joan, like... Casper or Crispin, said Bob. He's a saint of shoemakers, he is. That's a good name. I bet there's a saint of washerwoman too, said Joan. Only no one's ever heard of her. Well, if it is a her, it'd be no good as a name for him, would it? No, probably not, she said. I don't suppose... I don't suppose we could call him Roger, could we? Roger was the name they would have called a son of their own, if they'd ever had one. It's only for tonight, said Bob. Can't do any harm. Little boy, said Joan, touching his shoulder, we got to call you by a name, and if we ain't got one of your own, we'll call you Roger. Yes, said the little boy, thank you. They made up a bed in the spare room, and Joan took his clothes down to wash. They gave Roger an old nightshirt of Bob's to wear, and very small he looked in it, but he curled up tightly, looking for all the world, as though he were trying to wrap a long tail around himself, and went to sleep at once. What are we going to do with him, said Bob, squeezing the page boy uniform through the mangle. He might be a wild boy. He might have been abandoned as a baby and brung up by wolves or rats. I read about a boy like that only last week in the paper. Stuff and nonsense. You don't know, he insisted. He's as good as told us. I was a rat, he said. You heard him. Rats don't have page boy uniforms, she said. Nor they don't speak either. He could have learned to speak by listening through the walls and he could have found the uniform on a washing line bob said you depend on it that's what happened he's a wild boy and he was brung up by rats you can read about that kind of thing every week in the paper you're a silly old man said joan now that concludes chapter one I have a few comprehension questions for you now. I would like you to think about, number one, how does the author introduce the story? Is it through a setting description? Does he talk about the characters? Number two, can you describe and explain who Bob and Joan are? Number three, how do you think Bob and Joan feel when the boy turns up? Number four, what does the boy do when he is given food? Number five, how does the boy act like a rat? Find examples in the text. Number six, do you think the boy is really a rat? Explain your answer. And number seven is a creative writing task where I would like you to create a missing poster for the boy. If you do complete any of these tasks, please don't um, 
just leave it in a piece of paper. Make sure you take a picture of it and upload it up so I can see it and tag me on it. I've got my Instagram handle in the bio and also on the screen right now as well. I can't wait to see what you do and I'll happily mark it for you if you do any work. Now, once you've completed all your work, don't forget to come back for chapter two. Bye-bye.